Greetings once again, my friends, and welcome back to Drac Reviews. And today we're going to be taking on a game that literally came out a couple of, or at least a day after World of Warcraft Legion, and I actually did give a spotlight to. And some people have actually been checking in with me on this one. So we're going to go ahead and delve into Earthlock Festival of Magic. Now, <clears throat> again, this is an RPG. And so this would be more along the lines of a check-in review, but just be, be, to be able to say I haven't played a whole lot into the story, uh, just given the fact that it is an RPG, there's lots of grinding that needs to be done in the meantime. Uh, in this case, there was a little bit of grinding, but not, not too bad. But let's go ahead and dive into this check-in review for Earthlock Fe Festival of Magic, starting with the story. From where I'm at in the game, I'm roughly about 5 to 10 hours in, and I still am kind of learning like what where they're going with it. Uh, you play the main or the, you play the character Amon as he discovers a mysterious disc in an ancient temple, and with that, you are immediately sent on your journey uh, to figure out. Or after after coming home, you meet uh, a little pig guy by the name of Nart. I think that's how you say it, Gnart or Nart. And he actually says there might actually be some importance to the disc, and actually offers to bring you to his sect or his uh, university, for lack of a better term, to study the scroll or to study the disc and see what its importance is. And uh, and from there, it goes into uh, into basic JRPG tropes of you need to go get this party member and everybody apparently wants the disc from Amon, but you don't necessarily know the reason, at least you don't from where I'm at in the game. Uh, up until this point, I've actually been able to acquire... Four or, five, four or five party members, because I believe Zyka is one of them as well. <clears throat> um, so I've been able to acquire four, four to five party members, and I don't know necessarily a lot of the story. I've only, I've only encountered maybe a few bosses, and not a whole lot has been illuminated, at least to me. So that's kind of the basic or the basic premise of the story. You find a mysterious artifact, and now Amon, everybody wants to kill Amon uh, until he figures out what the disc is. That's also as spoiler-free as I can get. Uh, let's move on. So with the story, I didn't necessarily take points off of it. I mean, it's a typical JRPG story. Uh, boy finds this, this gets him in trouble, and, and so on and so forth. I, and I don't necessarily hate the premise there. Um, I will say that this is one of those RPGs that people are going to have some difficulty getting into because as I experience, it's a slow to build plot. So, or at least in my interpretation, it's very slow to build. And so in a lot of cases, I can see a lot of people not necessarily attaching to it. Uh, for me, I've, I've dealt with slow to build plots, so that's not necessarily a downside for me. And so I don't really, I didn't really take much off when it came to the story. Moving on into the visuals, and that's where a, a little bit more came off. I'm not necessarily saying it looks bad. It looks like a JRPG, but the the graphics for it, I wasn't necessarily a fan of. Um, I actually, they came across as, trying to not be mean about this, but they came across as bland. Uh, the animations, the the look of the characters, the look of the areas just came off as maybe something I would have seen in an RPG two or three generations ago, and now just looks very bland on an Xbox uh, console. So I did actually take some some marks off for the visuals, not a whole lot, but um, it's definitely one of the things that if, if I were in charge, I would improve on, it would probably be the visuals just to make them a little bit more, uh, make them pop a little bit more out. Cause that's, that's kind of my problem with it. A lot of the colors didn't really pop out. There's lots of greens and browns. And, um, so when you actually do see color, colors like yellows and pinks, it's, uh, they just kind of blend in and it, it just, it's a bland experience visually for me. Gameplay-wise, that's where things get a little bit more difficult. So this is a typical JRPG in a lot of its format. However, they actually try to also add in a bunch of other features, uh, like, say, talents. So, you know, talent systems like you've seen in, uh, in more recent iterations like World of Warcraft, Diablo, but there were earlier JRPGs that were implementing something similar to a talent system, like a license grid or, 
or um, I'm trying. I'm trying to remember what Final Fantasy X's was. I think it was the yeah, it was the Sphere Grid. That's what it was called. So I'm not necessarily that saying that's a bad thing because that's actually a really great way to customize a character. Um, it, it, it's a little bit more cumbersome than I think this game needed to be. Um, I think it was, uh, at least from what I could tell of it, the talent system was added simply to add in something that people were more familiar with, but not necessarily something that helps all that much. I mean, it does increase stats, but then you also got like specific abilities that you could make your way to. Then they added in uh, talents that represented other characters, like you would get bonuses based off of this circumstance. That's where it got a little weird to me. The other uh, system that was intriguing, but I have seen it, like, I, I I really do feel it kind of bogs down the game, but I have seen this done in other JRPGs, and that's eventually you get access to an island called Plumpet Island, and you are allowed to craft not only the talent slates that you need to be able to build up your talent grid, for lack of a better term, but you can also grow plants there to be able to get crafting materials, so you can make your, a lot of, uh, two of your characters are using ammo, from where I'm at and that ammunition is hard to come by. So at that point they actually give you the option that you can create your own ammunition. And the way you do that is from planting seeds and being able to harvest said seeds. And uh, I'm not saying it's a bad system, but it's definitely something that to me makes a JRPG more cu uh, cumbersome more complicated than it needs to be, especially since this is a, this is an indie driven JRPG. Um, and I don't know if that necessarily needed to be a thing that had to happen in this game. It would have been better if like I was crafting weapons, but in reality, if I, if in my honest opinion, the crafting system probably should have been something that happened later on in the game. Not, not so early on because that, that gives you such an emphasis that you have to keep up with it. Uh, so I did take some marks down for, for gameplay, but and quite a bit, just because I feel like there were a lot of good ideas put in play here, but they just made the whole experience way more complicated than it needed to be. Uh, moving on into the audio, it's nothing special. Uh, I took off quite a bit. The music is interesting, but the music also is repetitive. I'm not necessarily saying I expected a full-on AAA score from an indie developer. I really don't. Um, when they do happen, that's amazing. But a lot of the songs that I heard, I heard so often, and it was like a 10-second repeating loop. And I know that, that it could have gotten a little bit better than that. And there are little voices put into the game. It's not a voice-acted game by any stretch, but you actually do get like, huh, huh, and... I get why people do that because they want to be able to have that in the game. It shows that, you know, it's, oh, I'm an indie game and I'm more innovative. But all that makes me want to do when I hear the grunts and the groans is go, I want you to read your speech bubbles. And so at that point, I get why you did it, but it just looks like a blander Legend of Zelda at that point, audio wise for me. So I did take off points for that one. The audio wasn't anywhere near impressive. Uh, going into the replay value and to the presentation, does this all come together? It's a, it's a, it's a JRPG. So replay value is playing through the game again. I believe this does have a new game plus that you can get, uh, when you beat it to be able to get some of the, the more rare items. Uh, I would actually dare say, given what I've played of the game, the replay value isn't really there. And it's simply because I, I look at it from my perspective. I've replayed Final Fantasy games. I've replayed other JRPGs. And in this case, I would play through the story and probably never pick it up again. Uh, so I don't think that... I don't necessarily think the replay value is there. Overall presentation, does it come together to be able to provide a good experience? It has potential. It really does. Like, I can tell that there's a, a little smidgen of potential within the game uh, to be able to get better, but... Unfortunately, it doesn't necessarily come together all that well uh, to keep people going in the game unless they are just die hard into the story that the game is trying to tell, which, unfortunately, I'm not one of them. Um, so this is under the check-in review format, and unfortunately, just as you've seen the solution of, yes, I am going to continue on and I'm not going to score it, unfortunately, that's not going to happen here. 
I've played a good portion into this game and I've actually had to force my way through it simply because maybe the story will start building in the next section. And it doesn't. Uh, so unfortunately, I am going to give a final score for Earthlock. This is going to be my last review, and I am going to give a final score for Earthlock Festival of Magic of a 6 out of 10. That may seem a little low, but... I mean, the one thing that comes across to Earthlock for me is it's bland. It's generic. It's normal. It's not. It doesn't necessarily have something unique and popping out going for it. Uh, it tends to borrow from a lot of other JRPG features to be able to make itself something, and that's disappointing to me. I didn't really see an aspect in there that I hadn't either seen or heard about in other JRPGs. And so at that point, while I will say it has potential, and I will say it's above an average kind of game, because there, there are some good parts about it, I would I would say that the story, while slow to build, probably has potential to go further, it is just slightly above average for me. And that's going to go ahead and do it for my for my review of Earthlock Festival of Magic. Uh, again, if you're a fan of it, by all means, leave a comment below and, and let me know what you think of it. If it gets better, uh, just as of right now, I'm not necessarily all that inclined to continue it. Uh, and once again, thank you guys so much for watching this review of Earthlock Festival of Magic. Hopefully uh, you can understand where I'm, where I'm coming from on it, but if you can't, that's all good too. And, of course, thank you all so much for contributing contributing to my channel, subscribing to it, liking all the content. And, again, feel free to leave a comment below on what you thought of Earthlock Festival of Magic. If you're a fan of it, please make a case. I would love to be able to give this more of a chance if I, if I have some kind of guarantee that the story does get better. Uh, but that's going to go ahead and do it for me. So thank you guys so much for watching. And, of course, I will see you guys next time for the next review.